Hey guys. When it comes to loving yourself, we can all agree a healthy amount of self-esteem tends to do you some good. Even so, there are many figures that we know and love that may take it a little bit too far. Let me introduce you to Henry Cyril Paget, the eccentric narcissist of Victorian England, nicknamed Toppy for short. Toppy was born as the eldest son to the fourth Marquis of Anglesey and his wife, Mary Boyd. His childhood was off to a bit of a rocky start where his mother died when he was age two. He was sent to reside in Paris until he was age eight. At age eight, his father remarried and Toppy was sent off to reside in Place Neweth, Wales, the home estate of his family. From there, he attended schooling until he graduated from Eton College, had a brief stint in the army, and here comes... The good stuff. In 1898, Toppy married his cousin, Lillian Chetwind. Reason why, probably European bloodlines or something. I guess modern values have turned us off from this type of thing. Uh, before having a strong bloodline was like a redeeming feature in European aristocracy, but nowadays, it just means that you live in Alabama. So, Toppy married his cousin. Unfortunately, his marriage was already off to a rocky start. Paget already had some extravagant tendencies that she didn't agree with, and uh, he really liked to cross-dress. According to the grandson of Lillian from a separate marriage, he never consummated said marriage, and the closest thing they ever got was her posing naked, covered top to bottom with jewels, and she had to sleep wearing the jewels. I, I, I just want you to imagine the conversation <laughs> that they must have had for this this event to happen. It's just, imagine telling your significant other, hey, uh... So, I I got you this uh this dress, you see, but it's it's basically just a fishing net, but instead of knots, there's there's like diamonds. And I want you to pose in it for me. While while I just watch you. <laughs> and then um <laughs> once once we're done, I I want you to sleep in it. Ow. 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 Can I take these off yet? Every time I roll, these diamonds are piercing into my skin. Don't you dare. You don't know how lucky you are. <sighs> Whatever. Ow. 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 And they told me women liked to wear jewels. Later on, in that year, his father passed away, and he inherited the title Marquis of Angelsea alongside his family estates. Keep in mind, this estate was a whopping 30,000 acres, and it brought in around 110,000 pounds. That's roughly equivalent to 12 million pounds in modern times. But, you know what happens when money and eccentricity mix in? Good times. He renamed his family estate from Plas Newith to the simple Angel Sea Castle, converted a local chapel into the Gaiety Theater, and proceeded to start spending money like a madman. Another one, another one, another one, another one. Hey, uh, Toppy, your your father just passed away. He wanted me to give you the title and uh, all the assets of the family. Mm. Oh dear, uh, that that doesn't sound very good. Yeah, well, um, at least on the bright side, uh, you're making around uh twelve million pounds every year in modern day currency. Oh, uh, well, well, that's pretty pog. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you, you, even even still, um, ab about the funeral. Yeah, um, let's let's convert the chapel into a theater. Uh, uh, excuse me. Um, did I hear you wrong? Did I stutter? He would host extravagant parties and theater performances with himself as the leading character. He would go around flapping his robe like a butterfly, which got him the nickname the Dancing Marquis. His eccentricity led to one particularly interesting situation happening. Paget was attending the premiere of Arthur Conan Doyle's stage adaptation of Sherlock Holmes. He had a French valet by the name of Julian Galt, who saw Toppy's glamorous look. He thought, Hey, this could be a good way to make a quick buck. Let's steal from the man dressed in jewels in front of the premiere of Sherlock Holmes where Arthur Conan Doyle is going to be at. Uh, as as you can tell, uh, this this didn't go too hot. Galt was later arrested at Dover, but... Just imagine that. This man was the victim of a real-life Sherlock Holmes case, and got the closest equivalent to Sherlock Holmes in real life. What, what would the modern-day equivalent even look like? Oi, Benedict, someone just done shanked me family and those daft coppers ain't doing nothing. Ah, um, well, uh, I'm, I'm actually not qualified. It a bit rude for you to turn me down, ain't it, bruv? Just a quicken, please. Ah, 
Well, um, I'm, I'm really not. Benedict, please, me family was shanked. Okay, relax. I'll, I, I'll follow you, but no guarantees. Where is this? I, I don't see anybody. I like you, and I want you. We can either do this the easy way or the hard way. The choice is yours. To continue, I'd like to go in deeper on how he spent his money. According to one of the actors that worked at his productions, Cyril Davies, Tapia allegedly bought a customized car that converted the exhaust fumes into rose-scented perfume. He owned an entire fleet of poodles. He had a custom diamond-studded costume for Aladdin that was stolen, and he just made another. The list just goes on and on. As you can tell by this man's massive spending, he was really living the life. Even so, you really have to ask the question, how did he even finance this luxurious spending? Hey, uh, I'm your accountant, and I need to tell you something. What's the matter? I know you're getting the equivalent of 12 million pounds per year, but you're managing to rack up an annual deficit of 12 million pounds. Uh, well, well, that certainly doesn't sound very good. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd agree with that assessment. Well, uh, how would I solve it? Um, well, uh, I guess the easiest way is, uh, lower your spending. Preposterous! Mortgage all of my houses! W wh what Did I stutter? Now, I know what we're all thinking. What would his wife think about this newly created ginormous debt? Well, uh, let's just say this marriage ended rather quickly. Apparently after six weeks, Lillian separated from him and in 1900 she filed the divorce papers. As all good things come to an end, so did Toppy. By 1904, Toppy managed to amass a debt equivalent of 60 million pounds and filed for bankruptcy. They liquidated his wardrobe and his jewels amassing around 9 million, but you know, it's not even close to the entire 60. And well, uh, after this debacle, he retired to France on an income of 3,000 pounds a year. Just remember, modern day, around 300 grand. He was accompanied by a manservant, his adopted child who was dark skinned and who was later returned to her parents after his death, but hey, let's not get too deep into the weeds, and her nurse. Following this, Toppy's health began to steadily deteriorate until he finally passed away from a long-term illness in 1905. Preceding his death, his cousin inherited the estate, where he proceeded to burn all of Toppy's personal papers and liquidated almost anything left worth of value to help repay parts of the debt. In this brief seven-year stint in history, Toppy managed to strike his own weird strange place. As the signature aristocratic weirdo in Victorian-era Britain, that's extravagant lifestyle managed to bankrupt his entire estate. Well, I guess the biggest takeaway is that mixing money and weirdos almost always leads to interesting things. Thanks for joining me on Alex Ark, and I do hope to see you next time.